Welcome guys and gals to another video. Today we're going to talk about PUBG, also known as Player Unknown's Battleground. Uh, I've had a little comments here and there about people asking, what is Battleground? So today I thought we would sit down and actually talk about what Battleground is. So Battleground is a Battle Royale class style of game where 100 people enter the map and after that 100 minutes, I think not 100 minutes, after those 100 players all have entered, you know, they fight to the death, they all start with the same stuff, and they basically survive to the fittest. And the best man will win, the best man walks away with this wonderful thing they call the chicken dinner. Um, the title screen at the end, which you're going to see me die here very, very quickly, because I figured out that there's two people here instead of one person, so I'm not fighting a battle of two, um, that when you get the losing screen, when you die, you just get, oh, you have placed X number of prop spots. So you either placed 99, you placed 45, you placed this part, this is how many people you killed, this is how much damage you dealt, this is how many battle points you get, which you can spend battle points on the cosmetic stuff, so like the t-shirt I'm wearing and the fancy cow pants I'm wearing. That being said, if you get first place, that changes from, oh, you placed a set amount of space to winner, winner, chicken dinner. So when you're playing this game, you are striving for the chicken dinner. And that is the big, big, big thing of this game. People always want that chicken dinner. Which is always amazing, and it's a big rush when you get. But most of the time, you're going to get screens like this, and that's okay. You get better luck next time, you can move on. So this is player unknown battle. Now there are four stages to play our unknowns battleground. We call them spawn island, early game, mid game, and late game. And we're going to talk a little briefly about each section. So spawn island has it where you spawn into this little island and then you spawn into a plane. This is so that everyone can be in the server and it lets everyone kind of play with the guns a little bit, learn the controls, and get ready for the map. After you get into the map like so, there's going to be this plane which is going to drive over the map and fly over the map in very very different ways and it'll fly different lines so that each scenario is slightly different after you find a place you like to go you jump out of the plane and you head to where you go um, this moves into early game so in early game you can either pick to go to high populated areas or low populated areas if you go to high populated areas there's going to be a lot more players there but on the trade-off there's going to be a lot more loot there now there's also the counter side to that where you can go to low pop areas where they still have loot and you can basically go there and uh, there's going to be less players. There's still going to be the chance of players being there. So you always have to be on the lookout and you are going to get shot at any given time. Now, after you've done looting up at these kind of places, you know, you check other people's loot, make sure you get all the stuff you want kind of thing. And the mentality I go off of a lot of people say, oh, you need this really fantastic loot. No, you don't. You just need enough loot to kill the last guy. That's that's the kill that matters. All the other kills are just basically defensive at that point. Now we move into uh, uh, mid-game. So in mid-game, you have this thing called the circle, which if you look down the car, there's this little line that looks kind of weird going through our map right there. And the circle is basically the playable zone, the non-playable zone. And after a certain amount of time, after everyone has got out of the plane, it designates a play zone and then it designates that by a circle on the map. And you have to move to that circle within a certain amount of time or the blue bar right above the mini map will start closing in on your location and you will basically start taking damage if you're caught within the blue zone. At first the blue zone doesn't hurt too much but after a while the blue zone starts to hurt and as the circles get smaller and smaller uh, you start to take more damage. Now the next circle will spawn anywhere within the circle that has just been designated. So as soon as the blue zone reaches that circle, it spawns a new circle that's smaller and you have X amount of time to get to that circle. So see here, you see it moving in a little bit. Uh, in mid game, you can play two very different ways. You can either play offensively or defensively. Um, defensively is what we're kind of doing right here, where we are just taking shots at people that can no way, shape or form take shots back at us. Uh, the other way you can play is you can sit on the center of the map somewhere and you can just shoot people as they come by willy-nilly. But there is a third option which is kind of the less boring one. That's where you sit in a bush and you hide somewhere and you just wait for the next circle and then you move to the circle and you repeat process and you do this until you get to the late game. That is an alright way to do it but you spend a lot of time waiting and 
we play this game to have fun. We play this game to shoot big guns and shoot them at people and whatnot. So you gotta take those risks every now. Now here in the middle of the map, um, a lot of people they have different terminology for this. We call this sniper map. Uh, that's because every time we always have some guy like this guy that thinks he can go up there and become a sniper. But what they don't realize is there's hardly any cover up there, and it's very easy to predict where their cover is going to be. And then you can just start taking pop shots at them, like I'm trying to do here. Uh, pop shots are a little difficult with this kind of style gun I'm using, but you know, you can try. Um, that also brings up a very valid point. There are a lot of different rifles, shotguns, and SMGs, and light machine guns, and shotguns that you can get in this game, and they all have different attachments that help it do different things. Right now, I'm running a scar with an 8x on it, which, you know, is what I had at the time. You use what you got. Um, which is perfectly understandable. You do what you gotta do and get through it. But in this little section here, you know, um, I'm taking shots at this guy because he has no idea where I'm at. And no one else on the map has any idea where I'm at. Now, see, the next circle has been designated and it's got a lot smaller. And I am, in this case, entering into the late style of the mid game area. So, mid game is kind of the longest section. So this guy's still out here, he's shooting at me, and I'm kind of getting a little conscious of circle here. And I want to start moving before circle starts moving in on me. Uh, this is mainly because, you know, I don't want to get hurt. I don't want to have to use my med kits or anything. So we moved a little closer to circle, but here I inevitably got outside of circle. So I'm using health packs and boosters. That little bar above my health bar down there at the bottom is my boosters. That is my passive heal. So you take painkillers, adrenaline shots, and red bull energy or a look like red bull energy and you basically have a very passive heal and the first couple um, circles when you get into the blue zone the passive heal can keep up with the heal or at least prolong your life outside of the zone but as you get closer to final circle uh, the blue zone starts to hurt a lot more and starts taking bigger chunks out of your health now here I'm entering one of the most dangerous styles of the game, and that is you have to cross a bridge. A lot of people in this game like to camp the bridges, so you have to be very careful when you're crossing the bridges. You try to do this in a vehicle if at all possible, but in this stage I didn't have a vehicle, so I just had to run across it. And as we slowly start moving towards circle, um, I start to pay attention, look around. I take a first aid kit here while I'm out of circle because no one will be expecting that. And first aid kits, they only heal you to about 80% health, and you have to use boosters or a med kit to get the rest of the way there. A med kit will feel, heal you all the way, but they are super rare to find. The most I have found is maybe one every 10 matches, unless you go to high populated areas. Now final circle, or when it gets close to final circle, when you get to a top 10 situation, or where you're in the top I usually go about the top 15s when I start thinking of top 10 situations or late game. You have to start every time you see an enemy, you either have to make the decision whether to engage or disengage. Now, me and this guy, we got in a very awkward firefight where we exchanged a lot of bullets. The thing you have to realize when you get into the late game sections, everyone at this stage has pretty good loot to get into this stage. So that means they probably have a helmet on, they probably have a bulletproof vest on, and they probably have at least two weapons on them at any given time so that means that they have a very varied style of attack pattern compared to yours and they're going to be able to take bullets you're going to be able to send bullets their way so this is one way that you can play um, the final end game the top 10 situation you can play a little bit aggressive but you also have to realize that the circle is getting smaller and smaller and it's easier for people to see where you're at it gets more concentrated and gets more dense so you do have to be careful about putting off those shots. So right now I am covering myself from my left and my right because from my right I came up that way so I know that way is clear. My left I'm trying to keep that uh, grade in front of me so I have at least some cover. I realized I wasn't going to win that fight with that guy and I was going to take a better situation of getting in circle more so that I could better use my tools to get within circle. Now here, I have dropped my backpack and other non-essentials to make myself um, lower in the grass. I call this the snake in the grass tactic. It does work sometimes, but most of the time, you know, you usually do get killed pretty quick. And that's one thing you have to realize, you're going to get killed a lot in this game. You gotta have fun with this game. Um, it's just a game, have fun, 
and let's go for those chicken dinners. I hope this helped you guys out. Uh, don't forget to like and subscribe. Hope you guys have a fantastic day. Don't work too hard, guys.